Hello everyone and welcome. This is Teresa Litchfield. Recently I took a class from Alta New Academy called All About Laying 4 uh, taught by Lydia Evans. This really inspired me to make a card using the Exotic Tulip Stamp and Die Set. I'm going to make a slimline card so I can show all my elements on the front. I'll do a watercolor background with the stamp layering and I'll show how to make the envelope I made um, at the end of the video for this size of card. Here in the Northwest, we have a place called Lacona, Washington, and they grow the most amazing tulips. You can see them for miles. This was my inspiration for the card. I start out with a panel of watercolor paper that is 8 and 5 eighths by 3 and 5 eighths, and I use the Alta New watercolor paper and 140 pound. I'll use the 36 pan watercolors and I'll use all four of the greens in the set. I'll also start out using the large watercolor brush. I'll start by laying down some water with the brush and then I'll come in with the water bottle and lay some more down um, to really get that water moving on there. I want this to really look like grass and so I'm going to do this in three layers. I'm using the forest glades first for some depth at the bottom of this and then I'll come in with the bamboo and the frayed leaf and I'm really just trying to get some different colors and dimension on this with the watercolors. I don't want it to be perfect and this can really be a fun way to do a fast background. I was really being impatient so I decided to heat set this and using my little cutting board handle, it comes in super handy. And then I'll come in and do my second layer. And you can see I just wanted kind of a hard edge when it dried. I'll do the third layer the same as the first and second. And like I said, I'm just putting kind of random color on there. And I really want to get some texture with that paint. And then I'll heat set that layer as well. For the size 6 brush, I'm going to make some flicking strokes that resemble stems or grass and I'll use forest glades and evergreen to do that. I want to come in and do this um, in layers, just how I did the back um, background. And that will look kind of like shadows. Next, I'll come in and add some flicks of paint um, with the forest glades the frayed leaf, and then um, lastly the evergreen. And then I'll come in, I add some water to this with my um, distress sprayer. I just really want to get the paint moving and have it kind of fade out. It really turns out cool and it's dry. So here's the exotic tulip stamp set. And tulips are probably one of my favorite flowers. You're going to stamp that solid piece first in your lightest ink. And here's the packaging, um, the layering guide that comes with your Alta New stamps. I want some multicolored tulips. And for my red one, I'm going to start stamping with the Coral Bliss Crisp Dot Ink from Alta New. For the second layer of this tulip, I'm going to stamp it with Heartbeat. And you line that up on the sides, and you'll see it's the second one down on your layering guide. The third layer is an outline stamp. And I'm going to stamp that with the Vineyard Berry. And you're going to line this up on the bottom right edge and on the top peak there. What's fun about the outline stamps are that you can color them in different coloring mediums. And also, I love their stamp pads. They come in um, color families of four colors, and they're just perfect for layering. And you can see how that just really turns out beautiful. And I've stamped a couple of them, the pink one also. I'll stamp the little bud, um, the solid layer, and I'm stamping that in buttercream for that first layer. 
And then for the second layer, you're going to line that up on the top ruffled edge and around the sides. And I'm going to stamp that one with the uh, mango smoothie. My plan is to stamp a whole bunch of these in different colors. For the third layer, uh, that one's you're going to line up just around the um, both the right and the left side. And I'll stamp that one with the um, warm sunshine. You can see how beautiful they turn out and they really are easy to uh, layer up. And I've done a whole bunch of colors here. I stamped uh, four in the big flower and four in the bud. And I'm not sure if I'm going to use them all yet, but we'll kind of wait and see. A little trick I have for that stamp, because it is kind of um, thin, you're going to lay down your die, um, cut side down, and lay that stamp inside of it. And so it lines up perfectly when you go to cut it. So I laid that in my Misty, close the door and pick the stamp up. And I'll stamp a whole bunch of these. I'm going to stamp them with forest glades for the first layer, and there's only two layers of this. But I'm going to move that paper in my Misty like a half an inch each time I stamp it, so I now have to move this stamp. Then I come in with that first straight leaf, and I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, the leaves are really easy to line up. And for the leaves, I used forest glades for the first layer and evergreen for the second. Some of them I used a frayed leaf for the first layer and bamboo for the second. I'll shift this down an inch on this a straight leaf um, so I can stamp multiples. I stamp four of this leaf and then I'll come with the second leaf that's curved and I stamp for that and that one I had to move an inch and a half. It's so gratifying to see them all cut out and those little stems are just so cute. My card base, I cut a seven and a quarter by eight and five eighths and fold it in half at three and five eighths. And then you can see my watercolor background now that it's dry. And it'll just look so cool and all those are placed on top. For my sentiment, I'm going to use the Hello Lovely from the Fancy Greetings uh, stamp set. And I'm going to cut that out with a circle die. And it fits just perfectly with a 2 inch circle. So I place that in my Misty just to get... Um, make sure I have enough cardstock to place around it. And I'm going to stamp that with the Obsidian Black Pigment Ink. And I do stamp it a couple times just to make sure it's stamped really good. And I also cut three extras out of white in that two inch circle. And I'm going to place them all behind so and stack them up so it has some dimension on the front of the card. I took a picture with my iPad. I kind of placed them all on my um, on the card front, make sure I liked where they were, and I'll use that to a diagram on my um, iPad just to come in and glue them. Depending on what I'm doing, I'll take a picture with the iPad or phone, or I'll use the Glad Press and Seal. I did pop some of the flowers up with foam tape. And after I've got them all glued on there, I'm going to turn it over and cut off what's hanging off the edge with my long scissors. I then come in and I'll glue that uh, sentiment right there on the front right uh, corner. And just as I'm doing this, the sun decided to shine really brightly through my window. I used all but one leaf on the card front. And I'm going to come in and use the Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen on that sentiment just for some added sparkle. I'm going to glue the finished card front to my card base using the Alta New Tape Burner. And I made the card the size I did. It's a number nine uh, envelope size. 
And the reason I made it that size, I just thought I had more room on a 12 by 12 to make the envelope and have extra room for the flap. A number nine size envelope is really three and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. I'm just going to make it a four by nine to make the measuring easier. So you're going to need three pieces. You're going to need a five by nine and a half, a four by nine, and the flap is a four by three. I'm going to take the one piece, the five by nine and a half, and I'm going to score that a half an inch on the bottom edge just on three edges and again half an inch on the long side of each side and then you'll fold that and the other piece the four by nine is the piece that you're going to lay on top so now I'm going to just cut out the little bottom uh, squares on the bottom and I'll miter those also so they fold up nicer when you um when you glue that i'm going to use score tape to adhesive this together and then you'll fold that and i use my bone folder to reinforce that fold i failed to mention that i'm going to make this envelope as with a side flap instead of a top flap just for something kind of different I saw some of these and thought they'd be really cute. And so the flap on this, you're going to score that flap a quarter of an inch. You could also do a half an inch if you want less to um, fold over. And then you're going to do the same. I just mitered those again and fold that and reinforce it with my bone folder. Now I'm going to use some score tape. So I use a quarter of an inch on the envelope and down all three sides that you scored and folded. And I just put that on, tear it off. It's pretty easy to tear off. I have a lot of 12 by 12 paper uh, for my scrapbooking. And so you could use one sheet of that or a couple of the eight and a half by 11 sheets. It fits perfectly on the 112 by 12 though. Now I'm gonna do the flap and I'm gonna use the eighth inch score tape because I scored it at the quarter of an inch. But you could also do the um, eighth of an inch if you have that, if you scored it at a half an inch. And I realized it really was fine to do that. I'm going to put a pattern on my flap and I'm going to use the Dainty Swiss uh, stamp set. And this is probably my most used stamp set ever. I'm going to use the Rubelite ink to um, put that dot on the flap. It just gives it a little more character to it. And I did have to stamp this uh, two or three times. There's all sorts of fun things you could do to embellish the flap. And I just thought that sample was cute. I'm going to come in with my corner rounder and round those edges. And then I'll adhere that down onto that um, first folded panel. So I just line up the scores um, in between the scoring on the, um, on the main uh, piece there. And take off all the... Um, release paper and then you're going to take that uh, flat piece that is the 4x9 and what I like to do I kind of make sure I line that up and I'm just on the one side so it's kind of flat but I just kind of line it up and then I can press it down because I know it's cut straight this part can be a little tricky and it just takes some practice um, to make it a few times um, so it doesn't buckle. I adhered that flap and I'm just reinforcing the fold on that flap with my bone folder so it, it folds over nice. And then as you can see it's so fun and when you put your card in it, it fits perfectly. I use some of the 8th inch score tape on the flap for when you go to send it. I hope you enjoyed my card. 
I really had fun making it and I really think it turned out pretty uh, with the watercolor background. Thanks for watching and please like, subscribe and ring the bell for all the notifications. And I would love it if you would become a subscriber. Again, thanks so much for joining me and have a great day.